All right, uh, thank you very much. Uh, hey everyone, uh, I'm so glad to be here. Shout out to everyone all over the world who is watching this. I was able to make it. So uh, my name is Tony, Tony Sholarin Shodora, and I'm a software engineer based out of Lagos, Nigeria. I'm also a Microsoft MVP for developer technologies, and I enjoy working on and contributing to uh, open source software. Uh, so today I'm going to be showcasing one of my projects that was both uh, challenging and uh, pleasant to build. And it's also received a considerable amount of uh, community uptake. Uh, it's called Coverlet, and it's it's not the first to say, but I'd say it's still it's kind of the most used uh, cross-platform code coverage tool for .NET Core. Um, so before I go, this is going to be a demo-heavy uh, presentation. But before I, I I jump over to like showing us code and terminals and stuff. I'm just gonna gig out a bit to explain Coverlet and uh, how it works. So over to the next slide. Um, so typically the standard way code coverage tools work in uh, the .NET framework was that they made use of the profiling APIs. However, in the early days of .NET Core, and I think at this point, it's still uh, the profiling APIs are not yet fully fleshed out as they are with the full framework. As a result, the Popular tools like OpenCover, .cover that we're used to using on our Windows with the full framework have not been ported over to uh, .NET to work with .NET Core. So I decided to fix uh, to come up with a solution that bypassed the profiling API altogether. So how Coverlet works is uh, basically it recognizes your unit test assembly, uh, picks out the dependencies from your test assembly. Then Coverlet injects instrumentation code within those dependencies because naturally, if you're writing, if you have a test assembly for the main project, then it needs to pick up the main project. So in, it takes that main project, it in, uh, inserts, injects instrumentation code, and then it goes ahead to run your tests. So while the tests are running, the, the injected code within the assemblies are, are constantly recording uh, the code parts that were hit to a temporary file. And then once tests are complete, Coverlet takes up from there, calculates uh, the coverage. And once it's done with that, it restores all dependencies back to the original form. So you do not have to do any manual cleanup yourself. Uh, all these processes are, of course, fully transparent to the user. They do not need to interact with them. And from the user point of view, all you have to do is run a command and view your results. So I'm going to jump. Uh, right over to a demo now, so you can see uh, Coverlet in action. So over here, we have a typical .NET Core solution. We have the SLN file, we have the source program, which is where our code lives, and then we, of course, have the unit test, uh, the unit test project. So I decided to show something really easy and uh, simple that can, you know, we can all understand real quick. So we ha I created a simple math class that comes with four um, different methods. So we have the add method, we have the subtract method, we have the multiplication, and we have the division. So it's simple, pretty straightforward, add, add, subtract, subtract, multiply, you know, and it goes on and it goes on like that. And then we have um, the tests, the test project, which uh, basically tests out the individual um, methods that we have over here. So you can see here we have a method a test for the add method. We have a test for the subtract method. We have a test for the multiplication method as well. There is no test for the division method, and um, I'll I'll show you I'll show you why in a bit. So the very next step here is I, I'm just going to go run the test for now, just so we can. So uh, I can just go into the test folder, and then you can just run the. So .NET test as you usually view. And I mean, standard practice, uh, all this does is build the project and run, um, run the test. So all our tests are passing great. However, there's something I'd like to do. I would like to get basically call, uh, see how much of my code has been covered by my unit test. So I uh, notice that I'm working with a MacBook. Um, this would also work on the Windows and I'm light on the Linux, and I probably will test that out uh, later if we if we've got time. So the first step will be to add Coverlet to your project. So Coverlet is available in two flavors. 
You can either have a, include it as a package in your unit test project, or you can install it as a global tool. So including that, including it as a package in your test project allows you to, allows Coverlet to integrate fully with your build uh, your build pipeline. So I'm going to show you both approaches to using Coverlet. So we're going to start out with the most straightforward one, which is using it as a package. So to do that, all we just do is the .let add package coverlet .ms build. By the way, this is also coming from um, public Nugget repository. And uh, yeah, there we go. So using coverlet is straightforward. So we have our .let test that we used uh, before. Now we want coverage information. So to do that, we just add a new property, collect coverage equals to true, and we let it run. So over time, the, I should mention that the performance of Coverlet has greatly improved. Um, so now it had it adds very little overhead to the test run. There was a time it used to add like you know times two. It used to uh, it used to take double the time to run your test when you bring in Coverlet. So we can see here um, by just adding this extra property. We see that Coverlet automatically uh, integrated itself without us having to do any extra sort of setup. So you can see um, the tests run, everything passes, yay. Um, you can see it generating the, the uh, JSON uh, result, and then you can see a summary. So if you come over back to the code, you can see, yeah, so this is a very simple uh, JSON file. So this is Coverlet's own code coverage format. Um, it's basically a straightforward JSON that contains like uh, the line information, the branch information, as well as the method information. Um, this is the result. And you can see this is a very straightforward, um, this is a very straightforward uh, summary result. So, I mean, from the result you see we're not doing so well, our method coverage is at 75%, which is you know, hugely unacceptable. <laughs> Um, if you come over here, it's because, of course, we have four methods and we didn't uh, create a test for the div method to naturally sonify. We can see our branch coverage is exactly 50%, and we attribute that to the subtraction. Um, we attribute that to the subtraction method because you can see it has two points of uh, two possible uh, execution paths. When the, you know, the second argument is zero, because we do not want to run into uh, divide by zero exceptions, and of course, when that's not the case. So we, we see that if you look over at our test, we see that we are only testing the path where the second argument is not equal to zero. And of course, we have the line um, information which tells us how much, um, uh, in terms of how much of our lines have been covered. So before I jump into improving the coverage, uh, our coverage results, uh, I want to show you all the other different formats that Coverlet supports and how to you know work with them. So this is of course the program we ran uh, previously to get the coverage results. So to get a, a new format. So apart from the JSON format, Coverlet supports three other formats, which is uh, Open Cover, Cobertura, and uh, LCOV. So you can use the Coverlet output format property. So let's call open, open cover. Um, so build that, run your tests, generate your results, get them over here, and we can see the open cover uh, information over here. Um, so I'm going to do that for Coverture as well. Coverture. I hope this is how to spell it. I remember. Okay, runs, great. And then we can see Coverture. So guys who are coming from the Java world and everything will, you know, are familiar with our Coverture. And we have Elcov. Elcov is pretty popular, especially in the Linux world, where you can use like Gen HTML to just sort of generate HTML, an HTML report. So these are all, so you can see we have a coverage.info, which is Elcov file. It's also a pretty popular format. Uh, we have our uh, Coverture format, we have Coverlet on JSON format, and we have uh, Open Cover format. So this is done so that we do, you do not have to start creating converters to convert between formats, just so you can work with your existing tools. 
I decided while building this, I decided to pick some of the most popular formats so that you can just use it out of the box and it could be a drop-in replacement for um, whatever tool you were using before. Okay, so now we're going to go over to um, understanding how to enforce certain coverage requirements with Coverlet. So as you can see here, we have a um, you know, line coverage of 71.4%, branch coverage of 50%, and um, a method coverage of 75%. So imagine if, you know, in an organizational setting where uh, we have a best practice, I'll call it a threshold, for what our coverage uh, percentage should look like. So we cover that, you can set a coverage uh, threshold. So I'm going to go ahead and set um, um, let's call it 100% because we're perfectionists. <laughs> so yeah, so it's going to build that out. It's going to run our coverage and then it's going to throw errors. So you, you see we still get our coverage summary, but then we also get an error that says, okay, our line coverage is below the specified th threshold our uh, branch coverage and our method coverage. You can, of course, uh, specify that, okay, you only want to enforce the threshold for, say, uh, method coverage, for example. And if you do that, you'd see coverlet will only through a single error. But yeah, we want it, we want it across board, so let's leave it at uh, 100%. So let's go back to the code and sort of see how we can get over to 100%. So uh, the first step for that will be, of course, we can look over here and see that we're not testing the div method. So we can just um, go ahead and add a test for the div method. Set the equal, just take the 100 math, the div, 101, then And so let's go run it again and see how that change is going to improve our coverage. All right, so we can see our line coverage is, has gotten a bit better. And then, yeah, we got our method coverage at 100%. And take a look, now we only have two errors, which is the line and the branch coverage um, results. So let's go over here and improve uh, the branch coverage. So we need to test this uh, path of our subtract method. So I'm just going to have other simple stuff here and show it returns zero. Ooh, probably should have been for divide, but anyway, that's okay. And then we test that here. And then you can see we, we don't have any errors. We're covering all our branches, we're covering all our methods, and we're covering um, all our lines. And yeah, that is, you know, straightforward, pretty straightforward. Um, you don't have to do so much setting up or, you know, preparations to get to get started and productive with Coverlet uh, almost immediately. All right, so I'm going to move over to showing us the other way of using Coverlet because, you know, this was the, uh, the approach I originally used when I developed it. But then you had people who did not want to, of course, pollute their dependency trees um, with extra packages that they only needed in development. They didn't want to have to you know, add a new package that's going to make it to production that's only for um, a development, um, for development purposes. So um, I'm going to remove the package now. And then we're going to see how we can install Coverlet as a tool. Um, so we should, um, okay, so it's out. Let's get rid of, um, so let's get rid of all this stuff here. Great. All right. Um, so now we, we, we have, we, do not, we no longer have Coverlet encoded in the package list, but we still want to get coverage results. So what we can do is we use a new global tools feature in uh, .NET Core, I think it came out with .NET Core 2.0 or 2.1, I can't really remember. But then all we do is .NET to install global coverlet.console. Of course, this is also a nugget. And then we do that, it takes a while. 
And then if you just type Coverlet help, you can see the help um, stuff for Coverlet. All right, so Coverlet works, the Coverlet Global tool works slightly differently from the MS Build or the Build Pipeline integration approach. Um, it requires a bit more prep to be able to uh, get it done uh, quickly. So the first step is um, we need to specify the path to the test assembly. So by path to the test assembly, we mean uh, the path to basically the compiled DLL, which would be this guy over here. So um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and use, so I'm just going to uh, notice that I'm in the test folder. So I'm going to just do um, Two point one. Um, let's let me confirm. Okay, dot dot dot, dot tests. Dot Great. So now we add um, the we add the stuff. Then we go ahead to. Now we have to specify the target. Now because we do not integrate with the build pipeline we have to ensure that we specify our, our, test, our test runner. So in this case, our test runner is going to be .NET. We're still using this typical .NET um, test uh, infrastructure. And then we have target args. So here, you know, .NET tests are all, all well and good. We are, we, are in the, we, are in the, we are in the directory for the test, so we do not need to specify the path to the CS proj, um, we can just put you know. So this is basically the equivalent of doing running a .NET test within this for, within this directory. Also, we something very important here. We have to specify the no build flag, and the reason is remember when we were talking about the Coverlet internals, right? Coverlet injects code into your uh, into your assemblies. So if a build happens. Because usually .NET, when you run .NET test, it does a build first and then runs your tests. So specifying no build says, okay, just run the test straight up. Do not build because Coverlet actually instruments your assemblies before it runs this. So you need to ensure that running this does not um, remove the instrumentation code that Coverlet in injects. And I should also mention that you shouldn't be too concerned about Coverlet injecting code because at the end of every run, it makes sure to put back the original. So it was like, it was never touched. And then, yes, so we have, so this should be all. So you can just hit enter and watch it do its magic. And there we go. So we have, you know, all our tests passed. We see we are seeing the exact same information from above, but we're using the cover, the global tool. That's because, of course, the package as well as the global tool share the same core um, core functionality. So all that's different is how you use it. So yeah, this is coverlet stuff. We can, of course, specify. So you can see the information on what exactly you can specify over here. So we can, you know, the threshold, the threshold type that we did, you can ex exclude and include as well, which is also possible with the the package, uh, the MS build um, version, you can exclude certain source files so it doesn't, especially when you have situations where you, you auto-generated uh, some files that you know, basically should not be included in a test run. And of course, you can uh, merge other, cover, other with other uh, results from other runs, basically. Um, I'm just going to jump over to Skype to see if anyone has any questions. If not, uh, just uh, move on to showing a bit more with um, Coverlet. So um, now that you've seen the global tool and you've seen um, the um, MS build, I'm going to try to integrate this with uh, a CI server, basically. So you can see how uh, then you, you see Coverlet run on, I mean, a Windows machine, you see it run on Linux. And then if you have time, you can maybe push it to uh, some coverage hosting um, service. 
So um, I have, yes, yeah, so you can all go over, to, over here to get a demo of um, this code that I have. So I'm going to just integrate this with um, app there. My that's typically my CI of choice, majorly because well, it's got Windows and Linux build machines. So I'm going to just sign in over here. See, All right. So I'm going to add new projects. Okay, sorry about that. So my GitHub. And we should look for so over here. So we add that over here. Awesome. And then let's come back to our code. So I'm just gonna copy off some previous stuff that I that I did. So we had the typical app there. Awesome. So I'm just gonna you know breeze through this. Hey, what are you doing? All right. So I'm gonna specify that app value should use um, Visual Studio um, 2015, which is gonna be the Windows build agent, as well as Ubuntu, which is the Linux build agent. And we're gonna have configuration about this. Ooh, that's close. And then for our build script, let's uh, let's do a simple PS. I love using PowerShell, by the way. Yeah, just put that in and then simply do a .NET build in the roots that in the roots of the folder. All right, and then for the test script, I'm gonna just have it run um, .NET test p collect coverage equals to true. Um, probably shouldn't forget to add that back over here because I find that I find that um, using the find that using the package approach tends to be a bit more convenient because then you don't have to start running um, dot net call um, global tools on your CI server, but whichever one works for you, basically, you work it away. So then let's build. We just add that. Okay, great. So we can go ahead and just think. Let me just make sure I have. I didn't have any. I don't have any typos. Um, yeah. So. Just go ahead and commit as an improve coverage. Let's commit that. And then we have that add up there. Oh, why am I? So we just push that over to the repo. So awesome. Okay, so we got our first error, <laughs> have a typo. So let's look for that, I see, there you are. Which is great, by the way, because I use Circle CI sometimes and you have an error in your configuration file, it doesn't, it just doesn't build. So this is, this is the first time this has happened to me and it's pretty nice. So fix typo. Let's see how that works. Okay, let's take a look, see if that fixed it. Okay, so as you can see, we have um, we have our tests running on, well, 
uh, two different build agents with uh, in two different releases each. So we have the debug the debug uh, configuration for Windows. We have the release configuration for Windows. We have uh, Ubuntu debug and uh, Ubuntu release. So we can just um, leave this to run and you know, let's leave it to run. So I'm just gonna move over to the Coverlet repo itself which um, it's pretty uh, active. So you know, I constantly commit, I typically have people open up issues and, um, um, and I have PRs from the community. Um, so here you find a huge detail, in huge detail all the documentation regarding um, Coverlet from, of course, talking about how it runs. So you can sort of understand that. And then we talk about usage with both the global tool format as well as um, using the MSBU format. Let's see, where's the MSBU format? Yeah, so you can see how to do things like specify um, multiple output, format, output formats in a single run, um, how to merge results, how to, you know, I mean, you already saw how to run um, thresholds and stuff. And then, oh yeah, I, something I should, I should um, try to do. Let's go, I want to show you how to exclude certain things from being included in coverage calculations. So let's go over here and let's just temporarily comment this out. Um, come back here and do a .net, do a .net test, p collect coverage, true. Um, <coughs> bless me. And then, wait, so you can see, oh no, our method is at 75%, our line is at 78.6%. So what we want to do, let's assume, well, the div function is still under, the div method is still under, um, what's the word, development, we, we're not ready to include it in our coverage yet, so there's still a bunch of proof of concepts going on in there. Uh, we can just use system, I think it's a diagnostics, the code analysis, yes. And then you can just apply this, apply this um, attribute onto the div, of course, coming from this namespace. And you can see that when you go to run the coverage again, you see that the div, basically, the div method basically had no effect on the final output because we told Coverlet to completely ignore it. So that's pretty, um, that's pretty convenient for situations where you do not want certain unfinished methods to um, co uh, pollute the coverage, the coverage results. And if I, I do you one better, I'll show you the coverage of JSON that was generated. And you see that doing a search for div yields no results. But if you search for like sub, which are the other methods, you want to do the add method, you find all those over there. So that's uh, pretty cool. Hopefully you find it pretty cool. <laughs> all right, ooh, test the failing. Let's find out why. Excuse me. Um, Oh, okay. <laughs> so I need to just fix something real quick. .NET build. I will have .NET test test slash. Uh, just ooh, that was not supposed to happen. Let's see as project. So you should fix it. Okay, I think that should get it fixed. Yeah, I'm, test. I'm just gonna confirm that. And let's try again. Let's do another push. OK. 
Okay, so all right, so we have another we'll have another one running in a bit. All right, um, so while this is running, I'll just talk about uh, visualizing your coverage results because look at it this way, right? You have all this information stored here. You have um, all the stuff in here, but it's not particularly human readable. You can, of course, write a piece of code to pass this information and give out a bit more, give you a bit more context. But, um, well, it's a lot easier if you have some sort of graph or charts and stuff to, you know, take a look at, at stuff. So I'm just going to discard all this. So I'm going to talk about, very briefly, about, um, it's called um, Report Generator. For people who, for those of you who use um, Open Cover on Windows a lot, you'll be very familiar with um, this particular project from um, Daniel. So what it does is it takes in um, XML reports in this format, in any of these, and then generates it into basically something um, something like this. So while this is happening, I'm just going to go over here and try to work with it. So it ha luckily, it has a global tool option. I haven't used this global tool before, by the way. But so I'm just going to copy that out. Um, just going to install that. Awesome. So I think it uses the report generator command. Yippee. Great. So um, so the first thing I'm going to do is generate, the first thing I'm going to do is to generate uh, a co coverage result in the open cover format. Uh, so I'm just going to use the previous. So overlay output format. So I to use open cover. We can, of course, use Cobertura since um, the report generator supports Cobertura. Great. Awesome. So this is a very straightforward example. So I'm going to run report generator. Report generator. I'm going to have, um, so I'm just going to copy this. Of course, I'm going to edit it a bit. So I want it to be in the report folder. Um, it's also dot, let me confirm that. It's also coverage.opencover.xml. Opencover.xml. So let's see how that works. Um, great, yippee. So over here, so. We have the HTML file, so I'm just going to open this up. Let's see. Uh, let me review in Finder. Okay, so I'm just going to click that. Woo. All right. So, yep, so we can see our information. We can see very, it shows us, um, we can go here, we can see all that information. We can see each line that is covered which is absolutely great. We can see the line coverage, we can see the um, branch coverage as well. I don't think it does um, method coverage. Um, yeah, so this is pretty cool. So straightforward, um, in a very close cross platform way, you can get um, information about um, about your how, how well your tests cover your code. So that's um, a pretty good tool from um, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Oh yeah, so we can see on Windows, we can see that one of our stuff over here passes, um, you know, build success, and we, we see the coverage results um, generated. So I'm just gonna wait for this. I think we're almost done. Oh yeah, by the way, I mean, Coverlet also uses it's sort of like a dog fooding process. So Coverlet uses its own. Um, basically, Coverlet runs tests on itself, and if you use that to generate this handy little um, badge over here that we integrate with um, CodeCov, which is pretty popular. You have other ones that have cover us and stuff. Also, um, let's see. 
So over here, you'd see that Coverlet is working, is using the X unit. Um, when we were using the X unit um, test framework, um, just a good note that Coverlet works basically with any test framework that integrates with the .NET test functionality in the CLI. So whether it's a popular one or it's one built within your organization, uh, Coverlet will be able to work with it as long as you know you have it integrated with .NET test. Also, uh, using the global tool, if it's not even if it's not integrated with .NET test, because you of course have the ability to specify things like um, the test runner and the arguments to those test runners. Ideally, Coverlet should be able to work with basically any uh, .NET uh, unit test runner runner out there. So we can see the Linux build over here. And of course, we can see our coverage information. And uh, yeah, that's, um, so I'm gonna go back to the slides now, as that's um, pretty much it for the demos. Um, where are the slides? Great, so I'm gonna play from here. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, we have a bunch of hosted coverage services that Coverlet works with. So um, it works with CodeCov using the open cover format. It works with Code Climate, also using the open uh, using the Covertura format. So you've got or an LCOV as well, because LCOV and Covertura are supported by Code Climate and Coverlet. Then there's also VSTS, that's Visual Studio Team Services. Although now it's called um, Azure DevOps, which is uh, pretty cool, especially because it gives you like three different build agents: Windows, um, a Mac, and as well as Linux. And then you have SonarQ, which is another um, hosted service that you can also use um, SonarQ with the uh, Covertura or the open cover format. And then you have um, Coveralls, which is also, which would also work with the open cover format that Coverlet generates. Um, yeah, so let's move over. So this part, I'm actually quite excited about this part. You have some projects over time that have been um, using Coverlet to um, get stuff um, done. So GitHub uses Coverlet for their octokit.net uh, clients. They also use Coverlet in their, um, they also use Coverlet in their GraphQL.net client as well. Microsoft and the runtime devs, the .NET runtime devs use Coverlet to get code coverage for, um, they use Coverlet to get code coverage for their, the Linux builds for the, basically for .NET Core FX. So for those who might not be familiar with that term, .NET Core FX is basically more like the base class libraries for .NET framework, but actually it's time for .NET Core and they're a bit more modular because they're distributed as uh, Nugget packages as opposed to being included in the runtime. And then you have uh, Sentry, which is um, a fairly popular application performance monitoring um, service that allows, um, that uses Coverlet with their .NET, uh, with their .NET uh, client. Well, uh, also I should, I think it, it would be only fair to mention some other alternatives because even though Coverlet is by far the most popular um, cross-platform solution, um, it wasn't the first on the scene. And sometimes you might have certain specific requirements that Coverlet might not be able to meet, or I might not be willing to add, depending on how much interest it has. So usually you could just use the other two, which is a mini cover by Lucas Lawrence and um, alt cover by Steve Gilham. So these two diff projects, they, they try to achieve the same result as uh, Coverlet, but of course they do it in a completely different way. So for example, with mini cover, you have a bit more control over the entire process from things like um, what, what, um, what entries are, are um, instrumented, um, think what directories um, the, you want to find all your source, your source files from. As, and even up to you know you having to do the instrumentation yourself to ensure that you know you have re, uh, release ready packages. Alt cover is also a very um, well featured um, project as well. So you can check both of them out and see just in case you know 
overlay doesn't um, meet certain needs. Then, yeah, um, I mean, you can get in touch with me on any of these mediums. I'm basically tornado throughout everywhere. Um, so I tend to write a bit on medium. I haven't written in a while. Though. I've been focused on uh, to work and cover it. But you can, you know, catch me on there. I'm on Twitter. I'm on GitHub. And then here's my email if you just have um, any information to share with me. And, um, yeah, thank you guys um, for, you know, checking in. Um, do, do we have any questions? So, Actually, I don't know how to check questions live. No, <laughs> yeah, so we've been monitoring the chat, Tony. Um, I don't think we have any questions, okay. a lot of good comments. Uh, a lot of people say great demo. They really enjoyed it so far. I really enjoyed it over here, kind of learning about it. Now, I, you did say that, I have a question, I guess. You did mention that it works with any of the, the .NET test runners. So NUnit, MS Test, and XUnit, all of them supported? Yep. Oh, yeah, all of them are supported. All right. That's awesome. I just want to make sure I figure to give the whole list out. But yeah, I think that's, that's it. Cool. Yeah, yeah, and if 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 you've got anyone that isn't so popular, it as long as it's um, you have a runner for it, you can basically use it. If you wouldn't, you wouldn't really matter. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's all the questions over here, Tony. Thank you so much for uh, for showing us awesome. all the goodies. Yeah. I'm looking forward to be able to link to your all talk right. every time I get a question now about how to how to test on standard libraries. I will point to your talk. Cool. All right, Tony Wolves. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, cool. Cheers. Well, have a lovely, lovely day. Um, and thanks for the presentation. All right. Thank you for having me. I really, you know, enjoyed myself. Well, have fun at the rest of the uh, day. See ya. See ya. Bye. All right, we have the, uh, go ahead and you can uh, log out of there. Let's see, we have the one and only Jeff Fritz over here who tells us that audio is working. Audio is working. Audio is working. Uh, hey, hello, hello, .net com. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, well, Emo's not even in there anymore. There he is. Yeah. We'll see. He says that the audio is working and I say great. <laughs> and, the party and the party just arrived. Yeah, which is great. So everything's live. We're here. You know, we all purchased iPhones, I believe. Not Ooh. for me. I didn't buy one for myself because I'm an Android user. Did you buy one? Did not buy one yet. Hey, hey no. Ozcoder. I see some folks. I, I'm seeing the .NET bot salutes. Hello, hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. I'm, I'm wearing... A, <laughs> this was the only hat I had with a bird on it. How do and I get a C-sharp bot? You get a C-sharp bot if you are... A subscriber to my channel. Oh, I see how But you can use is. your Twitch Prime subscription over there for wow. free. But here's the thing. Every one of those is a donation to Girl Develop It. Oh, that's pretty great. That's nice awesome. hat. So, yeah, absolutely. What's your What's your Twitch handle for people who don't know? C Sharp Fritz. C Sharp Just Fritz. Just like the Twitter. C Sharp Fritz. Yeah, yeah. Boom. I'm, I'm at James Johnson Magna. That's my name. And I am a Amazon Prime member. Do they still give away a so free one? Amazon Prime, you get a free Twitch Prime subscription. You get one channel you can subscribe mm. to for free. Every month. Every month. And uh, absolutely, it is for good cause. You ancient know that. knows how this works. Now, I should probably do it while you're actually streaming because you probably have like stream lab oh, and jingles and jangles. Absolutely. I like that. So I don't want to do it now because then, I mean, I would get the bot, but then... Yeah, but then I wouldn't there won't be big fanfare here on .NET Con for that. Uh, so, um, yeah, we actually, some of the folks who were watching the stream, I want to say this morning, but it was yesterday morning when we were on with Kathleen Dollard, mm -hmm. uh, there were a bunch of folks that gave out gift subscriptions to random people uh, on stream, and they got bots. Oh, my gosh, it was a great That's time. cool. That's awesome. So, well, lovely. Yeah, we've been kind of chilling. We're, we're glad you're here to fix the audio. Holding things down, making things happen. I, I saw you guys were having fun playing with the Stream Deck. We did. We I bought a Stream Deck tonight. Are you kidding? I oh, that's great. I bought a mini, though. So. Oh, oh, the little six button. little six button. Emo bought one, too. And the question is, we want to see if we can, maybe you already know the answer. We want to create 
Stream Deck extension so I can F5 and F10 my code. Is that possible? So the Stream Deck, you, there, the, each one of the buttons you can wire up to run applications or to fire hotkeys. There ah. it is. So that's from our friends at Elgato. So, because I already have a HD60 and an internal PCIe card, so I figured I'd just give Elgato all my money. Absolutely, yeah. right? They, they've done a tremendous job with those products. Um, I, I fell in love with the Stream Deck, and and I've seen the tweets you guys put out there. You took screenshots of what photos of what the Stream Deck looks like that we tricked it's out. Pretty for, amazing for .NET Conf. I really wanted to make it so that when, when we hand it off to you guys, when we hand it off to Javier, when we have breakfast with Beth a little bit later today. Breakfast with Beth. Da, da, da. Need, um, need it's just, music. It, we do. We need theme music. Challenge to all of our Twitch subscribers right now. I'll give you a, I'll send you a, a Elgato stream deck. If you, whoever makes uh, six, no, I'm not going to go all crazy with the 15, okay. but um, I will send you a stream deck mini. If you submit to Jeff on Twitter, your you have to make the music though, or your audio voice, and whoever Jeff picks, yeah. if anyone submits, you can win a, a, a Stream Deck Mini. I will send that anywhere. Send send music for for Beth Breakfast with Beth. Okay, so Beth is on in about six hours. Six hours, six hour challenge. Okay, that's um. Because now that we're just giving Elgato more money, so not a not a sponsor, not a sponsor. not a sponsor, no sponsor. Okay. Who are our sponsors? Well, let's find out because we have a awesome. We've got lots of commercials. We have one. You want to play commercials? Fill it. Yeah, let's play. Uh, Gonna do the Azure. Uh, let's see who's that one. Well, I guess they're here. Yeah, sure. Let's start with let's talk about Azure Functions. All right, let's do it. I love Azure Functions. Azure Functions is a serverless compute offering that enables you to run code on demand without having to explicitly provision or manage infrastructure. In this video, you'll learn how to get started developing serverless applications with Azure Functions using Visual Studio Code. If you want to get started with Azure Functions inside of Visual Studio Code, you need to make sure that you have the Azure Functions extension installed. So I'm going to go to Install Extensions, and I'm going to search for Azure Functions. Now I'm going to go down and select the Azure Functions extension for Visual Studio Code. Now notice I already have it installed, but if you don't, make sure you go ahead and hit that install button. Now once you have installed an extension, you should see a section down here for Azure, with the Azure symbol. And then if I click on Functions, it should show me all my various subscriptions that I have. And if I, for instance, open the one that says Smart Hotel, and I open the Functions, I should be able to see all of the functions that I have available inside of that specific Azure Functions app. Now let's say I wanted to create a new Functions app right here on my machine. I can hit this icon here that says Create New Project. And now I can just select where exactly I want to put this. So let's create a new folder. First function. I'll choose that one. Now I can choose what language I want to use. In this case, I'm going to use C Sharp. Now I'm going to choose to open it in a new window. So let's close that one in the back. Now that my project is created, I'm going to go ahead and restore the missing dependencies. Now the next thing we have to do is actually create a function inside of our empty project. So I'll open a command palette again this time. I'll type Azure Functions, and then I'll go to Create Function. I'll select that function app that we just created, because that's where I wanted to go. And in this case, I want to create an HTTP triggered function. So I'll select the function trigger that I want. Now we have to actually give this function a name. I'll call this simple API. We choose the namespace. Next, we can choose the access rights. I'm just going to leave this as anonymous for now. And then within a few seconds, Visual Studio Code should have generated a function using the options that we just specified. Now, if I close the terminal, we could browse through the editor and we could see the code that's available for us to use. Now, what if I wanted to debug this function on my machine? Well, I could go back to the command palette, and I can hit Start Debugging. And now what we're seeing here is that the Azure Functions runtime is being booted up here locally on my machine. And so in a few moments, I'll be able to run and debug this serverless application right here on my machine. Now, if I go back over to the terminal, I can see the location that my actual API is living at. Let's do this. I'm going to open up Postman. I'm 
I'm going to select this API endpoint that we wanted. And I'm also going to set a breakpoint right here inside of my function app. Back in Postman, I'm going to paste in the URL. I'm going to pass in that query string that it's expecting, and then I'll hit send. Now back in Visual Studio Code, you can see that my endpoint was hit. I could continue stepping through this function, and I can view the variables, the stack trace, and I can also see any exceptions that get thrown, as you would expect in any regular debugging session. I'll let it go ahead and finish running. And now back in Postman, I can see my results here returned to me in the screen. If you're interested in learning more, take a look at some of these resources below. We'd love to hear any feedback you might have, so feel free to send it over. Enjoy the rest of .NET Conf. All right, we're back live. If the audio is still working, Jeff tells me the audio is working. Yeah, we got it. And I'm very excited because it is almost 2, 2 a.m. here in Seattle, Washington. Oh, yes. That's why I'm wearing, I, I, this was the only hat I had with a bird on it because the early bird is uh, here. Gets oh, you got it wrong. Shark. The early worm is the one that gets caught. Yeah. yeah. That's a bird. That's kind of how that works. I don't know. We're <laughs> At least that wasn't the bird finger. Yeah. No, it wasn't that. <laughs> and this is right, East Coast bird, not the Seattle bird. No. So. Wrong bird. That's okay. Well, what do we have? What are we going on now, Jeff? Uh, who's coming up next? Is this is Jacob? This Jacob? Jacob. Oh my gosh! So yeah. I was experimenting with peach pie last week on my stream. Mm -hmm. So peach pie is pretty cool, right? It's compile your PHP and use it with .NET. Oh, two of my favorite programming languages: PHP mm -hmm. and .NET. Oh, mesh. And, and PHP is my very first. That's what I started with back really? back in the day. Yeah. Oh, I love mm -hmm. it. So. We ready to go with Jacob? Yeah. Right. How do we, we do an ready? emo? This is this is James and emo signing off the .NET crew over here. Follow us on Twitter at James Montemagno and at Terra Drops. Yeah, very easy yeah. to remember. All right.